Okay, so we're going to start talking about the change of base formula. So the change of base formula is very, very important. Uh, before we evaluate it logarithms, and we can't evaluate them uh, in certain situations. So for example here, let's solve for 3x is equal to 25 to get a decimal approximation. Uh, if you remember, we can rewrite this. So if this is a to the x is equal to y, we can rewrite this as log base a of y is equal to x. And see how we isolate that exponent there? So if we have 3 to the x is 25, we can rewrite this as log base 3 of 25 is equal to x. Now, before we looked at different properties, different rules, there's nothing here, unfortunately, that we can use to change this. So we have to use our calculator to evaluate this. Now if I use my calculator though, if I hit the log button, you can see that unfortunately it doesn't have the option for the base. Now some calculators do, um, but um, we still need to know the change of base formula. So how do we change the base? Well, the change of base formula is pretty straightforward. If we have log base a of x, we can rewrite this as log, um, log base b of a, sorry, log base b of x over log base b of a. So b is the new base. And notice, I take the log of what I was originally taking the log of and divide that by the old base. So for example, if I have log base 3 of 5, I can rewrite this as log of 5 over log of 3. Remember, when we don't write the base here, this is actually log base 10, uh, that is the common log, uh, because we count in base 10, so the log with the base 10 is the most common. Uh, and so that's what we have there, so we can actually evaluate that. So here, if I want to solve for x, that means that x is going to be nothing more than the log of 25 divided by the log of 3. So in my calculator, if I do the log of 25, and divide that by the log of 3, we're going to get some weird decimal. So I'm going to round this off at the hundredths. I'm going to say this is 2.93. So my answer here is 2.93. That is my decimal approximation. Note, Anytime we have a decimal, it is an approximation. Well, you know, whenever we round a decimal, it's going to be an approximation. Um, so because I rounded this off, I put this about equal to this approximation symbol. So let's evaluate these. So if we have log base 4 of 25, I can rewrite this as log of 25 over log of 4. Now we can change this into any base. For example, I could do log base 7 over log base 7. Uh, and it's going to give us the same decimal. But our calculators only use base 10. There is also a natural log, which is base e. So actually to highlight this, I'm going to use both bases. So I'm going to do log of 25 divided by log of 4. And so that gives me 2.32. So for my answer here, this is about 2.32. Now I said that base doesn't matter. So what if I did base e? So natural log of 25 divided by natural log of 4. What are we going to get there? The same answer. Because the base does not matter when we use this change of base formula. It's all based on the old base. So change of base formula works for any new base.
All right, log base three of seven. I can do log base 10 of seven over log base 10 of three which is gonna be the same as natural log of seven over the natural log of three. Either way, if I plug this in, I get log of seven divided by log of three, and I'm gonna get 1.77. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff here. Uh, the way I like to remember it is that this old base is a little bit lower so I keep that low and I keep it in the denominator. Whereas that 25 is a little bit higher, so that goes in the numerator. All right, we wanna look at some properties here. So uh, first off is gonna be a product property. Whenever we have, um, whenever we have a sum of two logs that have the same base, we can rewrite this as a product of what we are taking the base of. So we have log base three of 16 plus log base three of two. This is gonna be log base three of 16 times two. Notice I combine this into one log. So I actually get log base three of 48. And I can actually leave it like this, and that's, that's fine. I don't need to get a decimal approximation. But notice, when we have the sum of two logs with the same base, we write it as one log with the product of what we are taking the log of. Uh, and I just now realized that 16 times 2 is not 48. I did 16 times 3 in my head. 16 times two is 32. So we get log base three of 32. Okay, quotient property works the same way. Before, if we were adding, we would multiply those numbers, but now we are subtracting the same base. So once I see that I have two logs with the same base, I can do log base three of 16 divided by two. And so this is gonna be log base three of eight. Clean and simple. We take the values of what we're taking the log of, and because we have this subtraction symbol, we divide those two values. Power property is really quick and simple. Whenever we have a log, no matter what the base is, any coefficient of the log can be rewritten as an exponent, as a power. So that means this becomes one log base three of four squared. Four squared is just 16, so this is the same as log base three of 16. If you're ever not sure, you can use the change of base formula, evaluate these in your calculator, uh, and you should get the same value. So here are those properties again. Uh, product property, we can see that we have this one log of a product written as a sum of those two respective logs. Uh, here we have a quotient of u and v. We write as a difference of the log of u minus the log of v. And finally, this power property, where the coefficient of the log becomes the power. Now there is no difference in the mathematics between the logarithm with base, any base or a natural log. Yes, this is log and that is ln but they act as the same, so these properties are gonna be the same as well. So if I have natural log of uv, that's just natural log of u plus natural log of v. Real quick and simple. Now if you notice, this sum is a little bit larger. We call it expanded. So the process of expanding a logarithm is going from left to right in this column here, or these columns, where what we're doing is we're taking apart these. So we're instead of writing it as a product of these values, we write it as a sum of these two logs. If we're condensing, we're going from right to left. So we would take this sum and we would multiply those values and write it as one log. 
there are benefits to why we would condense versus why we would expand. But basically, if you memorize these three properties, if you know them, whenever you expand, you want to go from this condensed form to an expanded form. And same with one you want to condense. You want to go from this expanded form to a condensed form. So we're going to get practice with this, but the key here is just understanding what these properties are, how they work, and then we can go through the process of expanding and condensing.